Hi there, I hope you're doing well today. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel, I'm an artist. We're now well and truly in 2024. It's been a little while and I wanna paint a new self-portrait. I'm not a huge fan of the one I did last time and I spend most of the year with pink hair so I need one that's a little bit more up to date. Grab your art supplies and let's paint. If you've never created a self-portrait or have done it once and then moved on, then this might be the video for you. Today we're going to be discussing why self-portraits are necessary for your artistic growth, how they can help you find your art style and why you should make them more often than you think. Today I'm painting my third self-portrait in little over a year. And you might think that's a bit over the top. Don't get me wrong, having a social media presence helps spur this on because it's good to have a profile picture that accurately represents you and your art. And your art is constantly evolving even if you don't see it. Most of the time, I don't. I can't see how any of the art I've just created is that different from the art I made a year ago. The portraits, landscapes, paintings, drawings, they don't seem to have evolved. They don't seem that different. But you know what does seem different? the self-portraits I've made. That's often what encourages me to make a new one, because my old one might seem too different to the direction that my art's going in. But I only notice this in self-portraits. Why? I believe one of the biggest reasons is that when we find a reference online, a person that we would like to draw, we naturally gravitate towards features that we know would look good in our art style. It's almost like a comfort zone. When looking for a reference, I naturally lean towards femininity, high cheekbones, cute noses, big eyes. Because in my subconscious, that's what I like drawing. I will naturally take a face and make the eyes bigger, the nose shorter, the cheeks rounder. And it's only now that I realize this, that I can now explain how I take a portrait and change the features into my own art style. But it's taken three self-portraits to get here because my face is not the kind of face I would choose as a reference photo. I have a bend in my nose, a long face with small cheekbones, dark circles around my eyes, and brown eyes. I often paint blue and green in portraits just because that's what I like. So why has it taken three self-portraits to get to this point? Why should you create self-portraits as often as you can? Well, because each time you might feel different. The first portrait wasn't about artistic growth or even an art style. I felt anxious going into the first portrait because I didn't see my face as something that could be used as art. It wasn't something I would choose because I just don't have those nice features. I wore makeup, I didn't want to add every spot, every pore, every dark circle. Obviously I realised a lot later on that it's art and you can change things however you like. But at that point in time, I wasn't sure how to get any likeness, so I tried to make it as similar to me as possible, and it did end up looking like me, but it didn't look like my art style. I changed the facial features a little bit, but my nose was accurate and it looked kind of cute, which I didn't think was possible. The biggest part of the first portrait was me realising that my face could actually be made into art. My self-confidence grew, and as did my abilities. The references I choose now have much more variety than they did back then, because I realised that I could draw and paint more than just the stereotypically pretty face. The second self-portrait didn't feel groundbreaking. Mentally, the first did, and I feel this is common for most people's first. Going into the second, I knew that I could paint something that reasonably looked like me. So this time, I changed it up a little. I added more of my own style. The nose is bigger, cuter, but it's still similar enough to mine, and it hasn't completely been turned into a cute button nose. I experimented a bit more with this one, and the end result looks more like the portraits I tend to paint. For the third portrait, I knew I wanted to lean even more into my art style, whatever that was. 
And that's when I thought long and hard about what makes my art style. And you can do the same for landscapes. On the channel, we go plein air painting together a lot because I can't emphasize how helpful it is to see the landscape changing before your eyes, to quickly grab the aspects that you like before they're gone. Working from a photo, you have all the time that you need to make it as similar as possible. But when it's in front of you, changing, you pick the areas you gravitate towards in that moment before you lose them. Drawing and painting outside is just as helpful as self-portraits, if that's the kind of art that you like to create. But when it comes to self-portraits, it can be difficult to see what makes up your art style when you're looking at a reference and figuring out how to draw that person. When it's you that's chosen the reference, you've already decided on certain aspects without realising. That's why something like the 100 Heads Challenge is really good for artists. It's a group of references on Pinterest that have been selected by somebody else. And you have to draw each face regardless of whether you want to or not. I mean, there's a lot of sculptures that I would never ever choose to draw and still wouldn't. They were interesting to say the least, but I would never draw them again. When you're at this point, you don't really know what your art style is. You've already overcome the first hurdle of your first self-portrait, but you want your next to help you figure out how you can find your art style? Grab a sketchbook and a pencil and stand in front of the mirror. Take a look at yourself, each aspect, and figure out how you would like to portray your portrait. You're looking at your own, but are you leaning towards something different? Longer or shorter, rounder? Then take the eyes. You can see where they are, how big they are, but looking down at your sketchbook and then up in the mirror, is that where you'd like them to be? Are they the size you'd like them to be? The shape? What feels natural? It's best to follow your gut. You can make the portrait look like you when it comes to the details, colouring, painting. For now, we're trying to figure out what aspects you gravitate towards when drawing a face. If you don't know your art style, when drawing a reference, generally it's a face you find somewhat attractive enough to draw. You subconsciously put that person's features down on paper as you see them because you like them. We're more critical when it comes to ourselves. There may be one or two things we like about our face, but the majority we can alter on paper without a second thought. And that's why self-portraits are so helpful. There's no unconscious bias. You can change the drawing as much as you like without a second thought. And this is how you can use them to figure out your art style. If you are painting a portrait commission for somebody's child, you can't just change parts of their face on paper. Or you could, but the parents probably wouldn't appreciate it. When it comes to self-portraits, you can, of course you can. You're creating art of yourself, for yourself. However you depict yourself is completely up to you. And this is why self-portraits are necessary for your artistic growth. Because you can experiment, have fun and create whatever you like. Yes, the self-portrait we're currently painting doesn't look as much like me as the first one did, but it does look like the portraits I'd like to paint. Under the paint, I can see the sketch, and it looks like some of my favourite drawings I've done. It's loosely my face, but it looks like the art I would like to make. Self-portraits are essential, and I wish I'd have started creating them sooner. I was scared that I wouldn't like what I'd see. Which is something I have spoken about in the first one, I'll leave them both down below if you're interested. If I'd have stopped after the first, I wouldn't be able to recognise my art style like I can now. I didn't know what my art style was. And even now, I think a lot of my pieces look so different from each other that they don't appear to be of the same art style. But I can recognise the components that make up my portraits just like I can recognise the parts that make up my landscapes. So that's why you should start drawing and painting self-portraits and never stop. I really hope you may have found this helpful and if you have, please press that like button. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, take care of yourself, create some art and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye bye!